Let's get cooking. Well, good morning and welcome to my home and our test kitchen right here in Solana Beach, North County, sunny San Diego, where we'll provide you with 10 weeks of digestible bits of science with hands-on demonstrations and experimentation to answer questions such as, how do we taste? How to make the perfect steak? And what's the science behind making the perfect French fry? So join me, Chef Meg, Executive Director of a local nonprofit, the Academy of Edible Sciences and Ethnogastronomy for this series called The Science of Taste. Our nonprofit is designed for, to empower both our youth and displaced refugee members through food-based education and community enrichment courses. Feel free to check out our website online for additional information on our two programs. Our Youth Test Kitchen, which has STEAM enrichment science courses for both teachers and students, and our My Grateful Feast Refugee Training Program. But stay with us through our 10th and final episode, culminating in a live finale, a battle to please the senses between local chefs and food scientists, all in support of ACE's new programming. So wash your hands, get your knives ready, and let's get cooking. For our first episode of the Science of Taste series, we've decided to lead in with, well, how do we taste? So let's look at those five basic tastes that our taste receptor cells on our tongue is able to identify. We have sweet, bitter, sour, salty, and the fifth and most recent added to the bunch called umami, which is a Japanese term that refers to more savory foods. So I laid out some options here, some examples to illustrate this point and some of these basic flavors that we're able to identify, such as our sugars that we all crave, our simple sugars such as fruits, or our more complex carbohydrates like muffins, cookies, and cakes. We have our bitter foods that some of us actually really love, such as coffee and beer, or our sour foods like pickles, and a little chutney that I made from the garden with lemon and some citrus. We have our salty foods, such as those chips that you crave at night when you're watching TV, or olives, and I have capers as an example as well. And our fifth, that umami, which is the more savory taste in some of these foods and earthy tones, such as mushrooms. Or I have kombu here, which is a sea kelp that has glutamate in it, which is more of that savory umami taste. And I even pulled a little bit of what's called katsubushi, which is dried, fermented, skipjack tuna, but it has this great depth of flavor to it. And that's what we really refer to as umami. But in order to talk about how do we taste, we need to look a little bit more at the anatomy and physiology behind those taste receptor cells. So pulling out our whiteboard here to illustrate some of these concepts, let's look at the gustatory pathway. And the gustatory pathway starts with those taste receptor cells and how they're going to relay information to our nervous system. So Essentially what's happening is these cells are picking up some of these chemical cues from the foods that we eat and then sending electrical impulses towards the central nervous system. The first stop along the way, the medulla, where a lot of that food processing takes place and then it'll go further down the line into the taste cortex. Looking as to where these taste receptor cells are located, they're actually housed within what we call the taste buds. The taste buds are what most of you are familiar with. And we have anywhere from 50 to 100 taste receptor cells that are housed within these kind of onion looking bundles that are within our oral epithelium tissue, which is just means like our mouth and our tongues there. So we have these taste pores that have one end with the stimulus sensing end where our pores are. And then on the opposite or basal end, we have nerve innervation. So that's where those information that's being processed by our taste receptor cells are being passed on to the rest of the nervous system. Now, because we refer to these nerve cells that they associate with, we can't though call our taste receptor cells neurons themselves because they actually lack what's called an axon. And the axon is where that information is passed down through nerve cells and they communicate with one another. 
If we take a closer look at our taste receptor cells, over here I drew a picture of one cell and the membrane where we have some ion channels that are associated with what we call the action potential. And the action potential is essentially the electrical impulses that each cell is able to produce. Now, this happens from a stimulus, which is the food itself. So as we chew, some of these chemical compounds are being associated and for example salty foods or sodium is going to rush into the cell which will then trigger to open up other channels in this case calcium where the calcium then floods and we're able to communicate that signal to our nerves passed down to the rest of our central nervous system we call that the action potential so I have some examples of how these action potentials actually play out with these different flavors. We have sweet and our action potential here, which is really what is the electrical impulses happening on that cellular level. We have salty and what that will look like for us. And we have sour foods and how we have a lot more rapid succession alerting to um, bitter or sour foods. And then I even put down our control here with water and we can see how that's a lot more calm and less of electrical impulse activity happening. Now there's some additional factors that influence how we taste. For example, as we age, we actually decrease our ability to pick up on the sensitivity of a lot of these basic flavors. In addition, temperature itself. As we increase temperature, we actually increase our ability to detect sweet things. And even pregnancy. We all know that pregnant women crave a lot of these foods, such as salty or sweet foods. For hunger, as we increase our hunger, we're going to increase our sensitivity to detecting sweet, salty, and even fats in food. Some negative interaction here would be obesity, disease, smoking. These are all going to negatively impact our ability to pick up on some of these tastes. Sensitivity itself, what we refer to, that's after we eat a meal, anywhere from one to four hours, we're gonna have a decreased sensitivity to food. Adaptation itself is something that refers to as we are exposed to different foods such as really spicy hot foods like peppers that we become adapted to those tastes and we actually decrease our sensitivity to them. Then how is smell involved in our taste perception you might ask? While many people equate flavor with taste, the distinct flavor of most foods and drink come from smell rather than from taste. Our basic sense of taste is relatively crude because taste receptors can only distinguish those limited characteristics of food, such as sweet and salty. Our system has evolved to rely heavily on our sense of smell to judge the quality of the food that we eat. So think of taste receptors on the tongue as gatekeepers to what we put in our mouths, and our sense of smell is providing the more detailed information on what it is that we are eating. So for our first experiment in our first episode, we've decided to ask the question, how do human senses impact taste? And we're going to do this through using some of our local taste testers here at my house to attempt to identify some of these foods. First by taste alone, so plugging their nose and also blindfolded. And then secondly, using both their sense of smell and taste. They'll then rank these foods on a scale and be able to compare the differences between sweet, salty, and sour in both of these conditions. So let's see how they identify. Okay, so we have our first two taste testers here. Let's go through the process of how we're gonna taste these 10 samples here. So to start out with, we're gonna blindfold you, and then we're gonna pour you a sample for each one of these. But what we need you to do is first plug your nose in your first tasting and we want you to guess what you think that food sample is. And we're gonna record it. Me and Chef Alex over here are gonna record that for you. And then you can unplug your nose and allow yourself to um, smell and taste at the same time. And we'll go through with you each sample and record for you whether you think it's sweet or salty or sour on the scale. Any questions? Right. The scale? On a scale from one to 10. Okay. So 10 being very strong in sweetness or bitter or whatnot, and one being lowest, like not tasting barely at all. Okay. okay. So first we need to blindfold you. Sorry. 
Oh, also, you do have a water cup in between each sample. If you want to use it, just ask us, and you can clear out your mouth, but that's up to you. Oh, We're I'm not forcing sorry, you yeah. to do that. Okay? Sorry. Let us know if you can see or adjust, adjust it yourself as need be. Yes. Okay, send that back, and hold out your hand. First sample, plug your nose, please. And go ahead, take a little taste. Don't unplug your nose until you tell us. Okay, there you go. What do you believe is this? Water. Water, okay. Tessa, do you have a guess? Flat flavor. What food is this or drink or? Oh. Oh. Ew, it's like watered down yogurt. <laughs> okay, that's Tessa's guess. Crazy! I got. I can't taste here. anything. Uh, Texture-wise, I'm guessing it's a celery water. It's got a grassiness to it, like kind of earthy. It's like a wheatgrass or blended spinach. Okay. Yeah. Like Cucumber that. spinach. Cucumber spinach. Okay. Go ahead and plug your nose. There we go. Can you guess? Another smoothie one. Oh. Well, we did blend each sample, so gonna nothing's like, going to be, it's all going to be liquid. Like, uh, strawberry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, it definitely got some bitter something. What is that? It's like cheese juice. <laughs> <laughs> cheese juice. All right. Good guess. <laughs> you can feel it on the back of your tongue on either side. Oh. Cheese juice. Is that where you feel it as well, Tessa? On the sides and back of your tongue? This, this might be the spicy one, but we're not getting the spiciness maybe. Do we have any guesses besides cheese juice as <laughs> to what this is? It's almost got a vinegary quality to it without oh. like, the, the bite of vinegar. Okay, so she's tasting vinegar some kind of water. Vinegar, vinegar water. Okay. Are we doing good? Are we getting an A? We will talk about that in our results tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Are we doing I'm very impressed, though. I'm very, very impressed I think by we're all of your ability. The first people. You're always winning. Yeah. You're always, always winning. winning. This is a competition. Yeah. Obviously. This is a competition. That's the pepper. Huh. What do you think it is, Matt? I didn't get any pepper. I got like, uh, like spinach juice. Spinach juice, okay. And are you guessing pepper then, Tessa? Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead and unplug your nose. You need to oh, taste it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> go ahead and smell it, job, taste Tessa. it. Let's start Wait, with was sweet. Because you smelled it before. No, I could feel it at like the roof, front roof of my mouth, front, hmm. front of the roof of my mouth. Huh. Salty. I, I think I know. Okay, what do you think? I think it's orange juice. Oh. And we're not getting the sweet note at all. We're only getting the bitter. Okay, interesting theory. It okay. tastes like uh, if you drink orange juice after you brush your teeth. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I hate that. Oh, uh, I smell something. Okay, go ahead and, yep, unplug your nose. <laughs> smell, taste. Oh, nice, Tessa. <laughs> I swear Sweet? I'm my nose. Olive, it's olive juice. Super acidic. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, no That's idea. Interesting. Okay. Go ahead and blend, Matt. You're oh, fine. Oh yeah, forgot. Mm -hmm. Are you going with that on there? Pickle. Yeah, it might be. It's something super acidic. Salty. Uh, seven. No, mm. nine. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So the pickle's saltier than the than the olive was, eh? Yeah. Okay. 
Pickle juice is supposed to instantly cure cramps when you're on a, when you're biking. Actually, yeah, a, I've heard that. Yep. <laughs> I have heard that. I Just drink the pickle juice. Yeah. Or if you're a um, long distance athlete, like a, whether you run like you know like ultra marathon runners, you meant to drink pickle juice. <laughs> yeah, you do maybe. Oh, that's orange juice. There's the. Oh, that's, that's the orange juice. juice. That's okay. The bitter note. Okay. That's lemon juice. Okay, go ahead and unplug. Or grapefruit. Hmm. Now I'm not so sure. Blood orange. Blood orange. Okay. Yeah. Grapefruit's different. Mm -hmm. It tastes like the path of a grapefruit. That was too bitter to be grapefruit juice. It's a better grapefruit. Okay, plug down. Go ahead. Oh, there's jalapeno. There's jalapeno. Oh, wow. It smells. <laughs> Smell it from a mile away. That hurt. I can't even you should smell be able it. to it just, smell it. It just torches. It's your nose plug, out. girl. Woo. Okay, yep. let's go ahead and unplug our Is nose. There a hot category? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Hold that drink in there, Matt. Do you not want it anymore? No, I'm good. I'm oh, okay. Uh, I'll try, okay, I'll try it for okay. science. Okay. For, for science. science's sake. On a scale from zero to ten, then sweet, please. There's, there's a uh, four on sweet. Oh, okay. All right. It's hidden. Yeah, there's like a subtle sweetness in there. Three. That's salty. Salty? Yeah. Yeah, that's like the like pickly thing. Any guess on what it is? All I tasted was salt. Okay. <laughs> Any guess? Oh, what did I know? <laughs> that like really more tastes like pickle. Very pickle. Sour. <laughs> Sour, okay. I don't know. <laughs> the last one. Alright. Alright, like your nose. Last one. Any guess? Spicy. <laughs> Ooh. Ginger. <laughs> Ginger, okay. I don't know, something spicy. <laughs> it's definitely very, yeah, potent. Um, <laughs> potent potent ginger or? Yeah, I can like feel it like burning on my tongue. Yeah. All right, let's do our round table analysis with our taste testers here. So we're gonna go through with you guys each one of the samples that you just tested and we'll figure out whether or not you identified correctly. And then let's all discuss um, the, the differences between your taste profiles here. So for your first one, we had a, a, a multitude of guesses, <laughs> but I believe that we all agreed that we needed to establish our control, which was water. So if you guess water initially, which most of you did, then you're spot on. So for sample number two, anyone want to give their of offer? Water? What kind of water? It was tap. Was it was water complete water. tap, That's not, fair, yes. This, this is San Diego <laughs> tap water. San Diego tap water. For okay. number two, did anyone guess it correctly? Let's, what was our guesses? We had... Water down yogurt. Okay. Veggie. Um, veggie. <laughs> okay. Well, it actually was yogurt. Any guess on what the yogurt was? The specific uh, type of yogurt? yogurt. <laughs> yeah, chocolate is very accurate. Okay, yeah. well, I mean, it was a Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. We tried to, in terms of viscosity or the thickness, we can't mimic them all to the same degree, but we tried to get them relatively closer. Um, so yeah, we, we did water down a little bit, the yogurt blended it up for you, but nothing else was added. So looking though at the yogurt profile, just so that we can kind of get a variance here, what did we think in terms of the sweet, salty, sour, bitter, umami? What were the notes in the yogurt that were the highest for everybody? Sour. 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 Super tangy. Okay, sour, sour tangy. Sour, yep, yep. But did you notice that these were things that 
weren't as easy to detect when you plugged your nose or do we think, think that so. as soon as you can smell it was smell, harder, yeah, it was as harder? As you can smell yeah as soon as before you even smell you unplug your nose and all of a sudden the the taste rushes in. Okay. Yeah. It did seem for a lot of you that as soon as you unplugged your nose, you could almost identify relatively close almost right away. Yeah. So it seemed like smell was a huge factor for all of you mm -hmm. in, in being quite accurate with at least identifying. Maybe there's still a variance with how you're tasting, but uh, yeah. with the identification. All right. So for the fifth one, any guesses? Now that we can see the color, what yeah. are we... Cheese juice. Cheese juice. Oh, is this your cheese juice? Yeah. Cheese juice. That's interesting. Any other guesses that we had for number five? I said tomato after I tried. After okay. I tried my nose. Well, I so what do you think so. are the yeah, qualities of both that you would have thought it was cheese juice? <laughs> but really, though, it's interesting it salty, that he said yeah, that. Salty, bitter. Okay. Um, salty, those bitter notes quality. Came through like back in the back of my tongue. Okay. Okay. Well, it is tomato. It is tomato juice. So we'd say the distinguishing factor then, if you can tell if something is uh, an olive and it's something is pickle, we would say is salty and sour. Mm -hmm. Those are the two mm -hmm. main tastes. Okay. All right. And then we have our ninth, which is now that we can see the color, what do you think? Grapefruit. 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 Okay. Did anyone guess not grapefruit? Oh, you said blood orange, which I mean, you're still in the citrus realm, mm -hmm. so I think that's I that's so good. Said orange juice first, just from the oh, orange from juice. The bitterness at the okay. You said grapefruit. All right, and then for our tenth and final one, what do we think? Jalapeno. 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 Yeah. Serrano. Serrano. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's well, spice. but that's the thing. <laughs> All of us have a different sensitivity. So it actually was jalapeno, which I've had some jalapenos that are literally closer to a Serrano in terms of how spicy yeah, they yeah. can be. So I think there's a variance there for sure. But um, could you identify though, like right away, yeah, even with your nose plug, that this spice. is something that's? Someone said ginger. Who? Uh, okay, I thought that was really interesting. Um, <laughs> just ginger spicy. One. <laughs> yeah, ginger is spicy in a different know. way, but yeah. the fact that you can detect it with your nose plugged and not smelling it, yeah. but you're like, this is ginger or jalapeno, or, that's, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Yeah. So, no, I think I'm you guys did it. super well. I'd say for whoever guessed right with their nose plug the most, I'd probably give it to Tessa. For sure. She was like, yeah, this is yogurt. Yeah, this is this. So <laughs> for just, yes, but you guys also have a little background in being able to taste us. So maybe we do have a little bit of bias that we only have one male in this experiment tonight. So maybe we'll need to back up some more data to compare. But um, yeah, so I think you guys did a wonderful job um, going through the five tastes. I want to ask you guys though, do you think it's possible that we can introduce a sixth taste that is not sweet, salty, sour, bitter, umami? What could possibly be the sixth taste? Because it's it. being argumented right now as to whether there is a sixth that we can actually taste that with our nose plug, taste receptor cells. Uh, there's a sensation. There's a sensation, okay. Like, you can kind of feel the flavors in a way. Right. Mm -hmm. So well, what could be a six? We don't six. have spice on here, do we? No. So you think maybe spice? I think it's definitely always on there. Heat. heat. Okay. I think you can feel the heat before you unplug your nose. For okay. Sure. Um, how about yeah. let's think about what are the different, in terms of um, our diet and what we need to try and get as a roundabout way of being really healthy. Okay. Protein. So we proteins, which would probably be more the umami. Um, the sweetness is going to be more the carbohydrates, right? So what are we kind of lacking here in being able to detect on our list? A lipid. Okay. So yeah, fats. Do you think it's possible that fats could possibly be our sixth indicator for taste? If we asked you to rank on a scale, <laughs> some olive oil, some, I mean, there's different types of fats, but yeah there is so maybe in our next yeah. one we'll have to introduce some more fats and see what we think if we can identify them yeah lard water <laughs> lard water yeah like olive oil <laughs> yeah olive oil Schmaltz. shots are olive right. oil tastings yeah. Yeah. chicken yeah. fat yeah. chicken fat <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. Well, thanks to our local taste testers for being part of this experiment. Kudos to you. A lot of you did really well, so we're going to have to keep you around for the next experiments. But um, thanks to all of our friends and family here participating in the Science of Taste series. And till next time, where we'll look at our steps in the experimental method. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.